Welcome to a sunny and warm Knockhill racing circuit for the sixth round of the Scottish Fiestas. And in today's programme, for the first time in 20 years, we're running in reverse direction. But it hasn't changed things at the front of the grid in qualifying. It's still Wayne McCauley on pole position, 39 points championship lead. He could seal it this weekend if things go really well for him. I'm going to hand it to Richard and he'll take us through the first race of the day. Thank you kindly, Joe. It is Wayne McCauley who starts on pole position with Peter Cruikshank completing the front row. Paul Curtis and Barry Farquharson on row two. Stephen Ward and Nicholas Forsyth on the third row. A mixture of STs and XRs on row four. Aidan Ward, Martin Ramsey, the XR pole position man, the grid completed by Christian Leith, Robert Kerr and Graham Cuthbert. The lighting sequence already underway and in fact complete. And my goodness me, no mucking about from the starting gantry. Lights off pretty much straight away. And it's Wayne McCauley who leads them down the hill for the first time. Unusual to see Barry Farquharson back in fourth on the grid. He's in the blue and white car, currently challenging for third place, but gets squeezed out there by the red 95 of Paul Curtis. Here's the view from Robert Kerr, 10th on the grid, third in the XR2 class. It looks like Graham Cuthbert's got ahead of him already. So some keen battling as ever this year in the XR2s. The XRs, of course, have been around quite a while now, so there are fewer cars available, but you, you never know. We might still squeeze a few more seasons out of them yet and have some great racing from, uh, from those lads. They're in 32 is Christian Leith, Christian chasing pole position man Martin Ramsey, both of whom fr uh, come from Shetland, and both of whom were in, uh, were in STs earlier on in the year as guest drivers, but now in the XR2 Championship. Here's the view from Barry Farquharson, this a challenge for third place, out towards the pit wall and trying to pass Paul Curtis. This is the run downhill, you've got to be hard on the brakes, he looked like he tucked in there to try and pass Peter Crookshank then went to the outside line and decided he had momentum uh, but Crookshank is equal to it there in orange the veteran of the championship so Peter Crookshank is oh he's lost it now so goodness me from fourth on the grid Barry Farquharson now up into second as I said it was unusual to see uh, to see Barry that far back on the grid but the fact that he was fourth has battled hard in these early laps means that his, uh, his great mate Wayne McCauley is getting away Paul Curtis qualified third behind Peter Crookshank and uh, he's still behind Peter Crookshank and also in the mix as well the black and green car of Stephen Ward in 55 Nicholas Forsyth is in the mix as well but Wayne McCauley making a little bit of hay I was going to say while the sun shines but uh, the metaphorical sun shining is the fact that he's got a gap and didn't have to worry about Barry Farquharson on the opening lap he has got a decent, decent gap of it at the moment and McCauley Lighting up the timing screen sets the fastest lap so far on lap two, a 62.821. And uh, sorry, 62.657. And here we go along the straight out of the hairpin and down towards Clark Corner. We've still got Peter Crookshank there at the moment in third place. Peter, who won round seven of the championship on the away day at Alton Park and going very wide indeed is Paul Curtis coming out in sympathy there as well is Stephen Ward Curtis manages to rejoin now if you're thinking about previous rounds if you've been watching and enjoying the racing then you'll know that that uh, Paul Curtis was with us last time out but in the XR2s, Paul Curtis. So there's been a lot of sort of interchange between the XR2s uh, and the STs. We've had a change of uh, change of lead in the XR2s as well. Now, Christian Leith, who joined us, he raced in the STs in June. And then the away day, which was also in June, Alton Park came down and had a go in the XR2s. And he's looking for a fifth class win on the bounce here. And he's trying to pull himself up in, in the... Uh, into the main championship standings. Graham Cuthbert leading the XR2s on 203 points. And then Robert Kerr on 158. Christian Leith is third on 120. He's going to really, I think he's going to have to, he's going to need some DNFs from the other guys to, to get into an overall championship winning position. But he's giving it a good go. And he's got another four races after this weekend to deal with as well. 25 points, of course, available for each win. 
So up the hill they go. It is Leith ahead of Ramsey. Meanwhile, the battle for West, well, not a battle for the lead. Here come the leaders. And it's number two, Wayne McCauley, still out front. Barry Farquharson is in second. And if you look along Barry Farquharson's list of results this year, the first six races are all seconds. A third in race one at Alton Park. Second in race two at Alton as we go on board with Barry. And then a win in round nine. So we've seen wins in the STs for Peter Cruikshank, Barry Farquharson, but the majority of them have been with the car immediately in front of us as we look through the screen. And that's Wayne McCauley, the man from Four Far, triple champion in Scottish Fiesta racing, XR2 champion in 2013, and then ST champion on his debut year, 2014, successfully retained the title for 2015. And he's on his way, as Joe said. He's got an outside chance of wrapping things up this weekend. Needs to get the gap out to 100 points but it is an outside chance and he's really reliant on Barry not having any any um, sorry he's really relying on Barry having retirements so up and over the brow go the lead duo McCauley still with fastest lap as we approach half distance Barry Farquharson responding so McCauley's 62.657 second lap and Farquharson's response he's getting a little closer but his best is 62.9 and trying to close in, as you can see, heading down towards Clark Corp. Look at the gap they've got over the third place car. We've got a scrap on for third now because Stephen Ward is being challenged by Paul Curtis. The red car's recovered well. Remember that errant moment for the red car? Well, he's pulled himself back into it. He's challenging for a podium. So Paul Curtis very clearly enjoying his racing here. We've got uh, XR2 territory for the overall leaders now. And you can see that that's Graham Cuthbert, who is going to be passed by the race leader Wayne McCauley great driving from Graham Cuthbert pull well clear to allow the race leader through and he's going to do exactly the same for Barry Farquharson that is real gentlemanly racing from Graham Cuthbert the XR2 championship leader down the hill we come again Cuthbert at the back of shot we keep our eyes just on the back of shot to see how Ward and Curtis are getting on but Farquharson still trying to chase down Wayne McCauley McCauley holding the benchmark at the moment to set the record here on the anti-clockwise circuit. And it is still a battle on for third place because Stephen Ward is under pressure and looking to get his nose on the inside on the exit of the hairpin. He's a little bit further back when we get side on to them. But coming into Clark now, and you can see that the 55 car is under big pressure. Paul Curtis having a challenge. Let's see what sort of a run he can get. He's having a look offline. He's going to look up the inside line, coming into the chicane, and he's drawing level. Oh, he's drawing level and grabs a bit, grabbed a bit too much curb there. And I think that dishevelled the car. He made contact with 55, Stephen Ward. Ward's going to be, I think, a little bit cheesed with that, to be honest. But it looked to me as if Paul Curtis just grabbed a little bit too much curb. I think it unsettled the car. And as a result, he tagged the back end of Stephen Ward's car, which went around. Ward will certainly come back and, and fight back. But he's lost two or three places, which is a great shame. But it has put Paul Curtis up onto the podium. Barry Farquharson still chasing Wayne McCauley. We're into the closing stages of this race and we're on board with the second place car. Remember, STs, the, the more modern cars leading the XRs, the two separate groups, enjoying their class battles but it's Wayne McCauley who will extend the championship lead once again 39 point lead coming into this race and he'll add another 5 points to that, 25 points for a win 20 points for second, Barry Farquharson has had to work hard over the course of the race though, starting 4th on the grid so very uncharacteristic that he was that far back, the pole position man from round 1 of the year and remember Peter Cruikshank has had pole position uh, as well this year, which was uh, at Alton Park. Peter Cruikshank travels well, uh, but uh, Peter sadly out of this row. While talking about Peter Cruikshank, I apologise to the other drivers. Actually, we'll come back to Peter in race two because Wayne McCauley is on his last lap here and he's going to grab another win. This is round 11 of the championship, incidentally, and again. Well, he runs a little bit wide there, flicks a bit of grass. No problems, though, for McCauley, the treble champion, looking to make it a third ST championship. Now, remember, he emulated Rory Bryant in being a double champion, Rory champion in 2010 and 2011. He's looking to be the first man to grab three ST championships. Comes 
out of back end tyres, through Leslie's, up the hill, and on his way to the chequered flag. It's an uphill climb. It's not been an uphill battle for him in this race, though. He got pole position, fastest lap, and he's going to take a lights out to flag victory. There it is. Wayne McCauley wins the race. Barry Farquharson is second, 3.2 seconds behind on the smart timing screen. Paul Curtis takes third from Nicholas Forsyth. Then Aidan Ward, uh, Stephen Ward is sixth. Christian Leeds winning the XR2s from Martin Ramsey. And then Graham Cuthbert and Robert Kerr. It was sadly a non-finish for Peter Cruikshank. Fastest lap, Wayne McCauley. Wayne, yet another win. Um, showing them how to do it there. Reverse direction doesn't seem to affect you at all. No, I actually really like that uh, reverse track. The chicane is absolutely awesome to come through in reverse. It's touch and go whether you get through it alive or not, but it's, it's really good going backwards around that track. Like. I'm going to point out my own mistake here. At the start of the programme, I said you can win the championship this weekend. I got a bit ahead of myself. You can't technically win it, but you can certainly make it really secure. Yeah, we can secure it enough that hopefully, well, I don't want to say we're going to have any DNFs, but we could be allowed one, I would say, just now, but don't want any DNFs. For too many years of having DNF, so we get a clean sheet this year, hopefully. Good stuff, well done, good start to the day. Thank you very much. And our XR2 winner, um, reverse direction, doesn't seem to be affecting you. Yet another win and slowly, slowly, slowly chipping away at this championship lead. Slowly, slowly, slowly chipping away indeed. I, uh, it's a long way to go. I don't know whether it's actually um, mathematically possible, but uh, we'll just ch keep chipping away and see how it goes. All you can do is keep on winning. Well, it's not going to be a bad way to go, but it is it. Well done. Thank you, man. <laughs>
uh, running this way round. I don't know why that is, but it, it does look, you can see, oh, one of the, is that a floppy mark or a bit of bodywork going there from the uh, second place uh, XR2, Martin Ramsey. Christian Leith leading that one. Christian has closed in a little bit now. He's within 30 points of Robert Kerr for second place in the championship. And uh, we'll probably close that down a little bit more. So Christian, I think, realistically might be looking at trying to challenge for second by the end of the year but we'll keep a very close eye on that of course as we as we go on in terms of the sts of course wayne mccauley did nothing wrong in race number one perfect 25 points so extended the lead out to 44 points i think i covered the mass in race number one but as joe said um couldn't wrap it up in this one i was just thinking what the gap was so he would have needed uh, 100 points coming in it was 39 and he could only pull out another 50, which would have taken it to 89. So um, a, a factual correction there. I was, I must admit, I was going along with Joe there, thinking that he could have got the championship, but but he couldn't have done. So um, uh, apologies to all concerned, but he will edge close to the championship if he can hang on. Good scrap going on here. But for second position, Paul Curtis, he may have the novice cross on the back of the car, but driving very well indeed. And Barry Farquharson in second position but that is by no means safe at the minute Wayne McCauley has a relatively safe lead and is again banging in some quick laps Wayne again setting a quick lap lap three 62.624 now in the BMWs they ran slightly slower in race number two to race one but Wayne McCauley's picked up the pace so he's really getting to grips with this anti-clock circuit and bangs in fastest lap again Barry Farquharson is the second quickest driver at the moment but uh, trying to get close to Wayne McCauley but not doing so Paul Curtis is lapping in the 62s as well and top three drivers all in the 62 second bracket and here's the view from Martin Ramsey first and second in the XR2 so Christian Lee still out front looking for win number six on the bounce Martin Ramsey keeping him honest his uh, fellow Shetlander good to see Martin back with this did race in the STs as a guest driver back in June as we mentioned Christian Lee not really under pressure but he, he'll see that chasing car in the mirrors and this as much as anything of course is, is about the race not necessarily about the championship but Christian will be thinking about how far up the order he can get by the end of the year quick reminder we've got uh, two more meetings to go 10th of September here at Knock Hill please come and join us if you can we'll be back running the other way around the normal way around and then in October it's the 8th of October and um, sure it's going to be a super week, two super weekends racing to wind up our 2017 campaign. Where has another year gone? Absolutely incredible. Here, though, is the battle for the XR2s. Christian Leith still there at the moment, third in the overall championship. And still trying to hunt down Robert Kerb. All the time Robert bangs in those finishes, he's going to pick up points. He picked up 14 points in race number one for fourth place in class. And it looks like he may well do so again. And it means that Christian Leith effectively only taking 11 points out of him per race. And the gap is much bigger between uh, those two. So it might be overcome at the end of the year. But anyway, we'll have to wait and see. They go up and over the brow, cross the line again. Christian Leith, the XR2 race leader from Martin Ramsey. Has a, a little look there, but Martin working hard, trying to close him down. It was Leith that got fastest lap in race number one. Robert Kerr, incidentally, the only XR2 newcomer, so he picks up newcomer points for that, so he might be able to bag the newcomer's title at the end of the season. Now, what about the lap times in this one? Christian Leith, best lap in the 66-second bracket, so on a, on a good lap, these guys are around about four seconds slower than the STs, just to put the spin on it, and both first and second, Christian and Martin, both lapping in the 66-second bracket. So, Peter Cruikshank with Aidan Ward immediately behind. You can see they've cleared Graham Cuthbert. Peter Cruikshank, eventually going to get the moment to talk about him. Peter was uh, subject of a, a super article in the July Wheelspin magazine, which is the Journal of the Scottish Motor Racing Club. So, if you want to pick that up and read all about Peter, it is in there. It's available online on the SMRC's website. It's a great place to uh, go, pick up the results, championship points, and the magazine has some... Um, good features some great features and also the race reports from the meetings as well so Peter trying to recover from that non-finish that he had 
in race number one, but we've got just about got the lead trio in shot. Through goes Wayne McCauley. Barry Farquharson second. Paul Curtis running in third place. Stephen Ward re recovering from that nudge that he had in race number one is the, I think, the next car on track, which we'll have a look back to see if we can see. No, we don't quite see anything. The back of shots, Barry Farquharson still trying to close. He looks like he's shaken off Paul Curtis for the moment. So things looking relatively settled in this round 12 of the championship. And Wayne McCauley is looking for his 10th win. So we mentioned there had been two other winners. Single win apiece for Barry Farquharson and Peter Cruikshank. So this is lap 12. And it looks like Wayne McCauley is going to get his win rate into double figures. He's been a prolific winner this year. Leads the championship still, though, not done enough to win the championship, despite what Joe and myself are saying in race one. Um, and that is also despite having uh, finished either first or second in all of the races as well so far this year. The second places were round seven, Alt Park and round nine here normal direction in july i'm actually getting used to watching the racing now going anti-clockwise i think the drivers and race fans are as well wayne mccauley certainly is he goes up the hill for the last time and he's going to get fastest lap again again set early in the race lap three for wayne mccauley pole position two wins two fastest laps for wayne mccauley extends the championship lead barry farquharson second paul curtis is third again a brace of podia for him Stephen Ward finished fourth from Nicholas Forsyth and Aidan Ward. Christian Leith winning the XR2s. Then Martin Ramsey, Graham Cuthbert and Robert Kerr in tenth. Sadly, another non-finish for Peter Cruikshank. Wayne McCauley, another win creeping towards the championship. Still friends with your uh, your front row uh, friend there, Barry. Who? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, joking. Ah, uh, yeah, no, that was a good race, sadly. Um, I made a mistake on the first lap, which I probably sent Barry into the stones, to be honest, because when I looked in my mirror, he was in the... Uh, jumping across the stones and after that I just I just got the head down and we started edging that gap just ever so slightly by the end and the car was cracking so I can't follow it that way. We'll bring Barry in at that. Barry step into the conversation here getting shoved off by your friend Wayne there not getting the win it's, it's not ended well. Yeah it's not good when he does that like, eh? but uh, no it was a simple mistake to make I tried to follow Wayne through it he went up on two wheels and I came off worse than that landed in the gravel but you live and learn now. You've still got one more meeting to try to beat him. You've done it already this year, let's not forget that, but you still need to beat him before the season's over. Two meetings, in fact. Yeah, it'd be good to get another win off him, but I'm telling you, he's making me work for it. Like, <laughs> And the XR2 winner closing the gap, step by step. Mathematically, have you worked it out? Can you still win this championship? Nah, I've no gone to as, far, as much detail as that yet. We'll just have to go back to the hotel tonight and see where we go for here. Two wins hasn't harmed you? Two wins has certainly not harmed me, especially in reverse direction. Getting quicker and quicker through today. I quite enjoy reverse direction, actually. It's not bad at all, that. Well done. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, that brings today's racing to a close. But as ever, we've seen some fantastic action all day long. Make sure you tune in next time for more of the same.